Hello and welcome. Today's video is about my trip to Poland to the WGL event where we did a World of Warship show match on the stage after the semi-finals before the grand finals and uh, this is just my trip there. It, it's not really about the games so I'm not gonna talk about the VODs or the weird casting or camera work. That one's a topic for a later time. This is just the trip itself. So. Essentially, uh, my plane went from Tallinn Airport at like 8, 6 p.m. And but the issue is that you know you had to be in the airport before because of queues and stuff, and just you know un unintended things could happen. So I had to leave actually because I don't live in Tallinn. I live like 200 kilometers away. I had to get on a bus like um, at 2 p.m. something like that to be at the airport before the flight and actually have time for check-ins etc. I reserved like 1 hour 30 minutes or so. But because I I have always been really bad at time, like I am always late to events and stuff like that for some who knows what, what reason, I just know that I am. Either I am late or literally at the last minute. And because I was making the Hakuryu video, you know the flying is fun part, I actually was like oh my god it's like uh, 1 25 p.m. I quickly threw the stuff together pressed render and was like oh snap I didn't actually pack yet so quickly I threw my stuff together and uh, ran to the bus station to because you know I don't actually live next to the coach station you know the one that goes from city to city so I, I was on the bus at like uh, 1 40 p.m. And then I went to the coach station where I had like five minutes to get on the actual coach. Luckily, they still had like one or two seats left, which, you know, would have even not been that bad if they hadn't had any, because there were like a few other coaches that would have gone to the airport before. But still, everything was last minute, essentially. Luckily, I got on the coach, which in Estonia, they're pretty damn amazing. They have Wi-Fi, a charging station, which I actually didn't know where it was. And when I asked people around me, they didn't know either. So I couldn't use it when I went there. Even some screens that you can watch movies on, you can buy headphones or earphones. I think you have to buy them because people would pocket them or something. So you would actually have to pay some money. That way they could make up the loss if somebody actually pockets them. Or, you know, something like that. So... I got on the bus, then I was rather glad, because usually I don't really like traveling. I've traveled by plane once before, and because I had to go on several buses and change several things together, missing even one of them would have been disastrous, and I get really anxious about that part. Like, really, really anxious, and I really don't like traveling because of that. But anyways, I got it all done because I was on the bus on time everything was fine I knew I would be arrive on, at the airport on time and probably wouldn't miss the flight so I was rather glad was just chatting on Skype and stuff because um, the bus had Wi-Fi and uh, I didn't actually really use the Wi-Fi because it, it wasn't very good um, I have a decent internet connection on my phone it's like 50 megabytes down megabits down and uh, 20 megabits up and it costs like 10 to 20 euros only a month with like a 20 gigabyte cap so I guess although since the bus is moving the connection isn't very good all the time but it was good enough to just entertain myself for the 2 hour 30 minute trip once I arrived at the airport I had only flown once before in my life and I was a lot younger then and it was with my sister so I didn't really care all that much about the stuff going on at this time, I was alone, so I had to actually navigate the airport, and turns out that I didn't know where to go. But luckily, this, uh, it's designed in a way to let people know where you have to go if you haven't been there before. So, essentially, from the time I got off the bus and did, and uh, when I finished check-in, only like two minutes had passed, and most of that was actually me just walking around. There were absolutely no queues in check at check-in, which was excellent. There was no security queue, so that was also excellent. So the security check took like only another minute or third minute or two minutes. Turns out, by the way, that you when you you know it, it if you're traveling inside EU, you're you can only take up to a hundred milliliter liquid with you of certain types. 
and they have to be packed in these mini grip bags. But the thing that they don't explicitly state is that all the liquids have to be in one bag. They can't be in separate ones. At least that's what I was told at security. So I was like, oh shit, I didn't actually take a one liter bag with me. I only took these 500 milliliter ones and this shit doesn't fit into, you know, the multiple stuff doesn't fit in it, into it. But apparently security just provides that bag for you, so it was no problem. So once I was done, I was rather confused on where to go, because the only way I saw to go was into a store. But maybe I just didn't actually miss the other exit of to the security area. But I just went through the store then, to the actual gate area. You know, it seems a bit odd that there's a store, but I could understand why it would be set up like that. Because, you know, people would walk past there and would be like, oh... They sell this, I'm a, I'm a bit thirsty, so I'm gonna buy this overpriced water. Which is odd, because you know, they call it the, ta the tax-free zone, yet stuff costs more than it does in the, in the actual taxed zone. Oh well. Who knows, I guess they really want their profits. I, I imagine it's not very cheap to rent uh, like a box in an airport anyway, so I, I can understand it. So once I got my stuff, Okay, once I got the drink that I didn't really want all that much, but because I was walking through the store, I figured I was a bit thirsty, so I took it anyway. I noticed that the secure area in Tallinn Airport is a lot bigger than I had imagined. Oh well, whatever, I still had like over an hour to go to, to my flight. There was actually like a children's playground there, which was surprising. Regardless, you would think that a modern airport would have like tons of these um, power outlets because you know people have their devices that they want to charge. Nope, doesn't. There's only like a few. Took me like 20 minutes to find one. Well, I guess when I found one, there were like two or three more, but still, took me quite a while before I found it, and it wasn't anywhere near my gate really. So I just sat down and charged my phone because I didn't find a power outlet in the actual bus. Once that was. You know, I heard that they were doing boarding for my flight. I was like, okay. Oh yeah, by the way, I had first class, which was surprising because I didn't know. Because the reservations say like class P or class R or something like that. And that doesn't tell me anything. So when I actually found out that I was first class, it was quite, quite a surprise. So I was just sitting there charging. I figured, you know, most flights get these final callouts and because I'm not that far from it, I guess I can just, you know, take a few fast steps and go there. So I just sat there charging my phone, and I'm like, okay, fine. I guess now it's time. I'll go ahead to the gate. I walk to the gate. Just as I was coming around the corner, they actually did a call out. Not a final call out, but they called me out by name that the plane is, w that they are waiting for me. Although it was a bit odd because it was still like almost half an hour before the actual departure of the departure time. Whatever, I guess everyone else was already on the plane, so instead of doing like a final call out for multiple people, they just called it by name since I was the last one. So, um, I just got on the plane. Sadly, I didn't get the window seat. Would have liked the window seat, but whatever. There weren't that many in the first class section, but I had a ton of legroom. Like, I could stretch my legs out fully and I didn't hit anything. Although I think that wasn't really a first class perk, that was just because uh, our chair, or my chair was at the very front in a way where they couldn't put another chair in there. So there was a bit extra room, everyone else in first class didn't actually get it other than the guy sitting next to me. They actually served us food on the plane, it was some potatoes with some kind of paste on it and uh, some meat and some other stuff. To be fair, I think it tasted rather bland, although now that I know that about the YouTube video, it says that plain food tends to taste bland because you are up in the air. The cabin is pressurized, but because uh, it's not pressurized to sea level pressure, so that pressure actually does change the taste of things. So I guess it kind of makes sense. Once I was done with that, I just... I couldn't really sleep because planes are loud as fuck, so I just read a book on my phone. 
Um, once the plane landed, I got off the plane, and I was surprised Warsaw, the Warsaw Chopin airport was large, like very large to me, a lot larger than the Tallinn airport. Well, so I just went walking to find somebody who, you know, was supposed to come get, come get me, although there were, was no actual agreement to that, I just figured there would be someone. But then I realized that I would actually have to exit the, you know, secure area before I can actually meet someone. And I was like, duh. So I did. And then once I did that, I was like, oh shit, I should have actually exited the gate that uh, was next to my actual, you know, exited the secure zone next, next to my gate. Not like in a random place. So I frantically started searching for, you know, the people who should have met me. Turns out I actually exited in the only, the right place, that was the closest one to my gate. It's just that uh, I didn't know that. And I managed to walk past a wargaming sign that was um, directing people where they should meet, like two or three times. I noticed all the other ones because, you know, they were like a blank piece of paper with like really large font with some text on it. But the wargaming sign was also a blank piece of paper, but it was a logo that was printed out, and that one wasn't nearly as visible as the other stuff. But I walked around, I went to the place where every, all the other signs were pointing that people were meeting. Not the wargaming stuff, but the other stuff. And then I, when I checked all the signs there, I noticed that one guy had a wargaming shirt on it. So I just went up to them and talked to them, and yeah, it was the right place I was supposed to be, but... It was fine, because we were still waiting for um, some German guys and uh, strangers. So we waited a bit, uh, strangers eventually arrived, he showed us the uh, plank, okay sorry, uh, he showed us the flight deck he made, which was pretty cool, I, I thought, but he wasn't dressed up in his kimono, so, okay. Um, then we, once everyone was there, oh yeah, I also met our minder, Michael. Uh, Minder. I don't know what you would call him. Essentially, he was our babysitter, you know, the one that made sure that we got into the places we wanted. If we were hungry, we would get food, etc. Which was actually, which is actually a really good idea. Because, you know, he's a local, and since we can't actually speak Polish, we can't interact with everyone, but he can. I think he was from ESL or something. Oh well, whatever. Mm. So we, after that, we went straight to the hotel. And actually, the way we went to the hotel was a damn limousine. Okay, I think some called it a stretch hummer. But, I mean, it looks like a limousine, so I'll just call it a limousine. With uh, some wargaming signs on it and stuff. Was quite, quite, quite impressive, to put it lightly. So we we took that one to the hotel. So right now, I, I had a first class flight that I didn't know. Uh... We were taken to the hotel with a limousine, which was also a surprise to me. And once we got to the hotel, I googled it and realized that it's an actual five-star hotel. At least that's what Google seemed to tell me. So I am I am rather impressed to that point. In the hotel, we meet like everyone. Oh yeah, actually, I think it wasn't Michael who met me in the airport. Might have been someone else. Oh well, whatever. Um, at the hotel, we we were just standing there and chatting a bit because you know we met some of the other teams and stuff and other people who took our names, etc., to find out whether everyone has arrived. And then we did our check-in. Turns out that I didn't actually have a reservation on my name. You see, the thing is that um, originally it was planned that everyone on uh, well, now everyone was supposed to be at the Intercontinental Hotel, but apparently the players got, at least from our team, got, and the German ones, got uh, an email stating that, or a correction, that would state that they were staying at the Marriott Hotel. But the only email I got, oh yeah, by the way, I wasn't supposed to actually be at the event because I didn't do all the, um, all the Dream Team battles before, etc. But because Wulubu couldn't go, I got the opportunity to do so. Which, thank you, Bulubu. I, I rather enjoyed it, and I'm sorry that you missed it. Really sorry. It was quite nice. 
so anyways once we got there um, at the Marriott turns out that there was no reservation on my name because I have got emails which said that I was at the Intercontinental. I never got an email stating that it was fixed to the Marriott. So maybe there was a reservation at Intercontinental there for me anyway, which I never took. But I don't know that one. I just know that uh, the guy that took care of us, Michael, uh, we told him and he was like, oh, no problem. And it was fixed in like five minutes. Like, I, I actually got a room at the Marriott, which is a good thing because, you know, everyone everyone from our team was staying there anyway so it made things a lot easier for us so once that was done we went to unpack in our rooms and the hotel room was amazing okay first things first one thing that's annoying we saw elevators it one of the elevators was out of order it had a sign that said that uh, sorry one of the elevators is uh, out of order and you should prepare like five to ten minutes for uh, an elevator ride because it can take that long. We figured it was a joke. Turns out it wasn't. But uh, it was a time where it wasn't too busy. So we just got there quickly. The room was amazing. I mean it had a shower and a bath and all that. You know like hotels normally do. But the amazing thing. Although maybe some hotels don't have it like in every room. Amazing thing was that my room actually had two beds. And I didn't have to share with anyone. And it was on like the 31st floor, so I had an amazing view of Warsaw. So that one was really nice. Although what was a bit less nice is that it, it's a fucking five star hotel. And to get Wi-Fi, you still have to pay extra. What the fuck is that? Why don't they have free Wi-Fi? Like, give them like a room number password or something. And even if you buy it, it's like 35 or 40 slotty per day. And then it's like two megabytes, megabits down. I don't understand that. Like my roaming uh, data plan from Estonia gave me higher speeds than the actual Wi-Fi at the hotel. And my roaming plan cost less. It was five euros a day. Oh well, but because my roaming plan was limited in bandwidth, I, or I mean in the amount of data I could use I used the uh, Wi-Fi because you know Wargaming was gonna pay for it anyway I might as well because I'll be fair I couldn't afford almost any of it that was there if I if I even had to pay it and would get the money back I couldn't do it um, regardless uh, once uh, once that was done we figured we would meet at the lo hotel lobby again to go for food Oh yeah, the bed was really soft, like really fucking soft, and the covers were thick, and it was so soft that it actually hurt my back to sleep, which was annoying. And because it's soft, you know, you fall into it more, and thick cover, it meant that I would sweat at night. Like I would wake up with my, with the back of the pillow drenched. Wasn't so nice, but because there were like a million pillows, you could always switch out or just flip the pillow on the other side, which I did. And just kept sleeping. Oh well, whatever. Also, sleeping with a cover wasn't possible because of the air conditioning that was on, and which I tried to turn off, but I didn't want to use enough force to push the button because I had used so much force that I figured that if I put much more into it, it would break, and I'd rather not do that. Although eventually I did figure out how to change it, and then it was a bit better. Well, regardless. We went to have a dinner in some pub. We finally met up with everyone. Oh yeah, at the lobby actually. Um, we're chatting with strangers and and I hear an awfully familiar voice. And now and I turn out around and I'm like, okay, that guy is Earl Grey because I can recognize him from his face because his face is plastered over all his media, which actually seems like a really good idea. And the other guy has a really familiar voice. And I know that he is Jingles, although I had never seen a picture of him. And then I found out that Jingles is old. Which is sad. I I, uh, I would rather Jingles were young. So that we could uh, have him for longer. But he isn't, you know, that old. He's just older than you would expect. Much older than the rest of the team anyway. So we went to some 
pub or restaurant or whatever you would call it we got some food wasn't very good in my opinion but it was okay like better than what I eat usually but you know still very good and uh, good are a bit of a different term and uh, you know so far I like I thought the guys were great I wasn't much friends with them because I didn't interact with them but you know I had figured they were nice people but then I actually found out that they were actually really good people like I didn't care much for Jingles' videos before that much I mean I watched some of them but because uh, by the time I had started watching him I was already fairly good at the game so a lot of it wasn't that in important for me although the stories were pretty good and the tanks part never really interested me anyway but turns out that Jingles actually was in the Navy and the t he had so many great stories to tell that I just sat there and was like yeah now I think I have to watch all of Jingles' videos because the stories he tells are great once that was done we went back to the hotel sleep next morning we met up at like 9 or something for food turns out that the 5 to 10 minute uh, elevator thing was actually true I had to wait like 7 minutes for an elevator when going down I was on the 31st floor I would go to the um, elevator part there were actually stairs but but it said emergency exit on them so I didn't want to open the door just in case you know it actually is just an emergency exit and not like stairs that we could use normally not to mention 31 flights of stairs is quite a lot food was served like on the second floor so we went there with the elevator after I had waited forever for it grabbed some food actually the food was amazing there in the hotel like breakfast you could have so much stuff and the service was also really good like you would go there and they would uh, take your name or, no not name just ask for the room number you know whether breakfast is or isn't so that they know would know whether they would add it to the bill or not and then someone would take you to a table like they they wouldn't come to you to make sure that you had a reservation or something they would actually show you to a table if you, if there was no one else there but because you know I knew that some of the guys were already there I just went to them grabbed some food the only my only gripe is the fact that the, the largest glass was really small I would have liked a much larger one. Oh well whatever grabbed some food ate it was really good went back upstairs which took I mean up with the elevator took another five minutes then came downstairs which took another five minutes just to take my stuff it took ten minutes from my room ten minutes just to go from the second floor to my room then back down again because I had everything set up I just needed to take it and you know because it was such a high-class place I didn't want to take it with me to the actual food place so we met up at the lobby I wasn't late luckily neither was like anyone else on our team and then we went for the photo shoot which was also a ton of waiting because uh, you know teams were done separately and the Germans went first and I think they did a lot of reshoots or something for them I don't know why I guess I guess it had to do with you know they figured out what they wanted to do exactly once that was done now it was our turn we also you know in the introduction strangers answer some questions he actually didn't know these questions beforehand he was like asked and immediately answered I knew a good answer I don't know it, it seemed ridiculous to me I figured he knew that beforehand but nope he didn't interesting thing was that when they took my photo he actually only took it once everyone else had multiple pictures taken but I guess the first one was like good enough for me so it was good I didn't mind it because I didn't really like standing there we actually were given these B WGL shirts uh, Michael took our sizes that we would like for the shirts the last night the night before but the thing is that uh, we were all given all L sized shirts which was a bit annoying because I wanted an XL shirt because uh, I figured L would be a tiny bit too small and it was but I think it was fine for me 
but Isolate definitely needed at least an Excel shirt, because he is built like a fucking tank, and uh, <laughs> it looked like the shirt was painted onto him. So, uh, but he didn't really mind, so I guess it doesn't matter. It it just looked funny. Oh yeah, by the way, going to the photo shoot, actually, I think the driver wasn't very familiar with Warsaw. Or he wasn't quite aware of where we were going, because he managed to drive into places where we weren't going to. Multiple times. And we joked that it was um, seeing Warsaw through the corners. After the photo shoot was done, we were taken to the actual venue, where everyone obviously wanted to eat food, again. And... Uh, we were shown to the staff food area, where I think players would also get their food. Um, we got some kind of lunch there. It wasn't that great, in my opinion. And I think everyone else didn't like it either too much, but... I mean, it's food. I, I don't eat much better at home anyway, so... It wasn't that bad. For me, anyway. Then we should have. Then we wanted to drop our stuff off at our booth, but it turns out they didn't actually have a booth for us, um, because the World of Warships show match was planned on such short notice. They only had eight booths, or however many there were for tanks. And the consolation they told us was, uh, well, some people are gonna get knocked out today, so tomorrow you'll have booths. But we didn't have any on uh, Friday when we actually wanted to do some practice matches. So we couldn't do any of the matches, and we essentially then had just free time, which most of us spent watching the actual games. And Strangers explained it to me in great detail, okay, not that great detail, just tried explaining it to me, and I didn't understand that much, but tanks looked really fun, and I think I should do like a stream or something where either Strangers or Tukka or someone explains or tries teaching tanks to me, or even viewers, because I think that could be quite fun. So, once uh, the matches were over, Michael told us that, you know, our minder, that we should, uh, essentially, when the match ends, we should immediately head to the shuttles, because all the wargaming staff, etc., are also going to take their uh, shuttles to the actual hotel, so it is a really good idea to be there first, otherwise you might be stuck for hours. Luckily, we actually got there really well on time, which, by the way, I actually think Michael did an excellent job because of things like that, because, you know, he has experience with this and he just knows it. I wouldn't have thought of it and I probably would have been stuck there for hours. Once we get to the hotel, people wanted to go eat dinner, because some of them didn't get dinner at the venue because they were busy watching the matches. Went to some pizza place, it was okay. And uh, then we went to bed. I think some went out for a drink or something, but I, I figured I would want some sleep. It was as uncomfortable to sleep there as before, because the bed was, again, too soft. You know, you might think that, oh, the bed was too soft, first world problems, but if you're really not used to having a soft bed, it, it actually isn't very comfortable. I mean, it's, it's okay if you lie down for a moment or at first, but after a while, my back actually hurts. So, that wasn't very good. Next morning we were supposed to meet up at like 8.30 because the producer wanted us to be able to go get on the stage before the actual World of Tanks matches start. Because it's a rather large stage and the venue. So, if the first time is when the actual... If the first time you get on the stage is when there's like thousands of people watching, some people might get a bit stage fright. Although I imagine in our case it's not that big of a deal because uh, most of us are like Twitch streamers or YouTubers or similar who are, you know, used to having thousands of people watch us. But I thought I thought it was a good idea anyway. So when we got on the stage, we were told what we would do. We weren't told that we were supposed to shake hands after we or before we took our seats, so that's why the handshake part was awkward. But regardless, we entered our names, Jingles did some amazing typing, I don't know why it was so funny, but apparently it was. Um, and after that we actually got booths, which was great, so we could play. I think the system they had is actually excellent, where you would be given an SSD, 
that would have the game and you could set all your settings, mouse settings, etc. Everything could be set up. And then, when, uh, you know, you would do your pra practice matches in it to get your settings just right. You, you must does, not know that in fact, the 731357 goes, goes into the mining card in the third sector and boots really hard, that you automatically enter the, third, the, the fourth sector. How to lose? We did our practice matches. Uh, I'll be fair. I don't want to be. I don't want to um, say bad things about the German team because they were great guys. But our team was much stronger. I think the main reason wasn't that uh, we had more experienced players, although I think we did, because I think some of the German players weren't very experienced with the game at all. But the main reason I think we we were a much stronger team was because we had Chrysanthos and Strangers, who were both um, really experienced with team battles. And it wasn't even Strangers who was our team captain that did much of the important task. It was really Chrysanthos who actually got us to do the strategies we had planned, you know, where the Terpitzes tank all the damage before the Atago, that way we would, could we could put out as much damage as possible because the Atago is your main damage dealer instead of the Terpitzes. Although some of the Russian community people at the after party later told me that the Terpitz players were all noobs. Although I think he didn't quite realize that he was talking to one of them. But um, I just think the other people didn't really understand the strategies that we had. And because the strategy was really good for us and it worked well, even in practice matches, we essentially had... We were rather confident in it. So after we were done with that, we were told that we have to take... Uh, the keyboard, mouse, mouse pad, and SSD onto the stage ourselves. The thing with the SSD is that you would just plug it out once the computer was shut down, and it and you would plug it into the actual uh, machine on the stage. That way, you would have all your settings saved. You wouldn't have to set it up on the stage machine. So I think that's a rather clever system. So we went on the stage at some point when it when the semifinals were done, set our stuff up. Uh, and then went backstage again, and then did our proper intro. The handshake part was awkward because we weren't told that there was going to be a handshake, but whatever, we, I, it was just heat of the moment thing for us. Then we played the matches, which went exactly according to our plan, except the last one. Uh, we did have two problems in two of the games, two players couldn't actually move their ships. Luckily for our team, we actually called it out and we could get a restart for the match, but I think the Germans didn't. Which is a bit unfortunate, but I think they wouldn't have won that much match anyway. The main thing that bothered me about the cast and VOD is that uh, I was playing the Tirpitz, which, which according to our strategy was a really fucking bad role, because we couldn't do shit, the Tirpitzes would always die first. And uh, you would spend like five or six minutes. I mean, if you look at the first game, like six minutes in, both teams have lost all of their battleships. Both teams. We just couldn't have strategies that would take long because uh, on stage it would look too boring and it, you know, wouldn't be. It wouldn't actually showcase it in a good light if both teams have five ships left at 20 minutes. And they just shell each other from really far away. And try to like contest the cap from in a weird angle or don't contest it at all. So we did do some closer range brawls. I guess it is a good strategy anyway. It's just that it's not very fun for the battleship players. And the one time, one time I did really well. Something amazing. Something you wouldn't expect in a battleship. In the second game I sunk the enemy carrier in a tirpit. I thought that was like, oh yeah, that's my moment to shine. Like, like I didn't do all that much in the first one. The second one so far hasn't been great. They did, they probably haven't shown me much. But this time I sank the enemy carrier. This is like a big win for me. And when I watched the VOD, the casters, nor even Twitch chat itself noticed that I had done it for like one or two minutes. Minutes. How do you not see that the enemy carrier died? How is this possible? But, oh well, whatever. I mean, it is what it is. It's just that I was like, oh my god. This is my moment to shine and nobody saw it. Okay. 
I mean, it, it's not like it really matters, it's just that um, I didn't do all that much in any of the games. I could have maybe done it in the third game, but we lost because we ran out of points. It would have been great if we had been on Land of Fire with our, our strategy, but we got shattered with a 4-2 spawn, so the two-part got absolutely stomped, and then we, well, just didn't have enough points. Maybe if I had gone around the island the other way around, I would have been able to save it, or if there had been like 20 seconds more, strangers could have saved it, but... Oh well. Would have been nice to win that one though, because I thought the strategy was pretty good, the Atago Rush. It is actually one that does work. At least Omni does it, apparently. But regardless of that, uh, the matches went well. Once we were done, we went off stage. We were told... The producer told us to listen. Apparently, what they were talking about at that point was that we had won chairs, which we didn't actually know. Like, we were in the... we were watching World of Tanks finals, and uh, some people were saying, like, congrats for winning chairs and stuff like that on Twitter and stuff, and we were like, what? What chairs? So, on Skype as well, I noticed that, and I asked Mr. Conway directly, what the hell is with this we had one chairs thing? And he was like, oh yeah, you guys won chairs. And that's when we actually confirmed it. I think other than strangers who went off immediately to watch the finals after our match was done, didn't know that we had actually won chairs. Luckily, we were most of us were sitting together, so we found out once I asked Mr. Conway, but it still took like an hour. I think everyone else knew that we had won chairs before us. Oh well. I mean, I'm glad, because I really need a chair. So, and I think those chairs were pretty amazing. So, that went well, I think. I I know I watched the wads and it wasn't very good, but uh, playing it and everything from the player's side, from my perspective, was excellent. Then I watched the tanks finals and oh my fucking god, I feel so bad for that one hell rises guy. Like that guy is never going to live that down. You know, the guy that got stuck on the rock. I feel so fucking bad for him. So we went off, um, then we watched the tanks finals, we went elsewhere, we were just sitting around doing, doing some, I don't know, we were just sitting around waiting to know what to do next. We even ran into the Hellraisers guys. I, I hadn't thought about it at the moment, I thought that was the winning team, because you know, they had all these camera guys around them, but no, it was the actual the fucking loser team. And uh, I, I, uh, they definitely looked down. I can understand that one. Losing like that, that's 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 a bit sad. Okay, that's not even a bit sad, that's just sad. And not in a bad sense, but just unfortunate. My sympathy goes out for them. Although, from the Navi side, I think they were rather... I would be ecstatic. Especially because the guy that did it all was called Inspira. What a fitting name. It definitely inspires. Well, once that was done, it was time to go back to the hotel, put our stuff away, maybe uh, have a shower, and then we went to the after party, which I didn't really care that much about. I just wanted to play either tanks or talk about tanks or talk about ships or play ships, which we couldn't do because the venue had really fucking loud music and I couldn't hear shit. Although I think some of the, us were rather happy that all the drinks were free so some of them got rather wasted and I heard that the, uh, although not from our teams or the ships community I heard that some people got so drunk that even the police arrived later but uh, me and strangers we we really just wanted to talk about the game we chatted with some of the wargaming guys and that was actually rather nice that's where I met their community guys from Russia uh, but I thought the after party was I mean as a party I imagine it was great but I'm not I'm just not a very party person so I just so at some point at like 1 a.m. we just left and we decided that we would just watch the VODs in the hotel lobby with strangers to see all of the stuff that happened you know all of the mistakes because the only th we hadn't actually seen them we had only heard about them you know pictures with the USS Otago and stuff like that and and I'll be honest, it was quite funny when we actually watched it. Although it was less funny that we started watching the VODs at 1am. 
and we finished at 5 a.m. Although, even though the VODs were only 50 minutes long, the issue was that because we had been on stage and a lot of the press guys apparently were staying at the same hotel as we did, they would just come over and chat with us about ships and all that stuff. And then there would be people who were like, Oh, you're the guy with the aircraft. Oh my god, let me, let's talk about this stuff. And then there were some drunk people who would talk and all that stuff. Eventually though, uh, we finished watching it, went to bed. And uh, that was the last time I saw Strangers. Then, because the next time, you know, I would be leaving before he does. Um, next morning I wake up, do the hotel elevator waiting game. Grab some food, then do the elevator waiting game again, grab my stuff that I had already packed, then do the elevator game, game again to go downstairs. And uh, we left at like 10.40 or something, we were planning to leave 10.30 from our hotel, but we left 10.40. Because one guy was missing, but the way he was missing is that he was waiting for us outside, not inside the lobby. Oh well, whatever. We got to the other hotel where the limo would pick us up and take us to the airport. Which was done at like 11am. Which was sad because my plane actually left at 2.30. So I was at the airport like three and a half hours earlier. A bit less, three hours earlier. But the thing was that some Kazna crew guys had to leave a bit earlier, a bit before us, but not early enough to have a separate transport. So we were bunched together with them and... Uh, we just had to wait a bit longer, which was okay. Except, I think, uh, I, I hope Earl Grey doesn't really um, resent me for talking his ear off, because she didn't seem to be feeling all that well. I imagine he had a few too many drinks to not have a headache. So, at the <coughs> airport we just sat around, chatted about Twitch streaming and all that stuff, and then we went our separate ways. I got on the plane, this time it wasn't first class. Which I didn't really care that much about. I guess the main difference was uh, that I didn't sit at quite the front of the plane and uh, we were served just water instead of uh, food and water. Was a gr was uh, an uneventful flight. I came back. I didn't buy a coach ticket to Tartu from Tallinn Airport because uh, what if the plane's late? I'll be wasting like 10 to 12 euros and that is a significant amount of money for me. So, once at the airport, I just went online, bought a ticket, but that meant that I had to sit around like another <clears throat> 90 minutes at the airport. Once I got on the bus, things were great, because then I knew that I would be getting home soon. Uh, the girl sitting next to me this time knew where the charger was, so my phone didn't run out of batteries either, although I don't think I would have needed it, it's just that... Uh, because if you change uh, masts all the time for uh, data plans, it uses more batteries. It's good to charge it. Because I didn't want to use the bus Wi-Fi because it's slower and it doesn't let you do stuff like YouTube and Imager. And I mean, my data plan is completely fine for that stuff. It's just that I, I didn't want to actually have to go through having my phone run out of juice. Bus ride back was quite fine. <clears throat> Once I got to Tartu, I took the other bus home. Arrived at home at like 9.45, so I essentially left the hotel at 10.40 and got home at like 9.45. So, 10 hours. It's 10 hours because uh, I changed time zones as well. Still, 10 hours to come back come back home from Poland is quite a lot of time. Regardless, uh, at home, things were great. I don't think I missed anything, and uh, I felt fine. So, all in all, I really enjoyed it. Even though I was rather anxious at first, because of all the travel thing, it, it went really great, and I definitely hope that I can do something like this again in the future. Because it, 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 it was really enjoyable, especially meeting the guys. Because I think what, I think what um, this kind of thing did is uh, it built the 
community contributors and stuff, it made them be a bit closer. You know, before I would never have uh, approached Jingles with uh, things like I would have sent him an email just like everyone else with replays. Nothing, nothing different, just like literally every other person. I wouldn't try to contact him in any other way. But now, once I've actually chatted with him, etc., if I want to actually set something up, I might actually, you know, send him a different type of email as well, and maybe even try to get him into a show match or something. Sorry, not show match, I mean like a, a stream match or something. Because now, because I've already chatted with him, although I think it's unlikely I would do it with Jingles, but like Earl Grey, sure. Because so far I hadn't, I mean, I knew who they were, and we would host each other on Twitch, but like, we wouldn't really interact all that much. But now, once, it just felt that uh, this event, at least for me, uh, made the community way closer. And that's why I really liked it. And I would definitely like another opportunity at some point. But yeah, that was my trip, essentially. Uh, once we get the replays, I'll talk about the actual games as well. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe and thanks for watching.